SpaceX is on the verge of Starship's third orbital flight test, with Starship 28 just wrapping up its final test ahead of the flight. Preparations for Super Heavy Booster 10's testing campaign are underway, hinting at a potential early 2024 launch. Join us as we delve deep into the latest Starship updates. Starship 28, which was rolled to the launch site on December 14, recently completed two engine tests as part of the preparations for the upcoming integrated flight test. After testing its forward and aft flaps, the ship got ready to test its six powerful Raptor engines. Propellant loading into Ship 28 for the Spin Prime test began during the morning hours of December 16. The oxygen tank was completely filled in an hour. The engines eventually started venting, signaling that engine chill had started. Finally, the Spin Prime test was conducted, where the engine's oxygen turbo pump was spun up to operating speeds and liquid oxygen flowed through it, effectively ensuring that the pump worked as expected. The number of engines that took part in the test was unknown. Most likely, all six engines were involved. Four days later, on December 20, Ship 28 underwent a static fire test. The test, which involved firing all six Raptors of the ship while it was being held firmly on the test stand, was carried out to ensure the plumbing, valves, ignition systems, and engines were operating as intended, before an actual launch. In this top view, you can see the engine plume direction changing when the three outer vacuum engines of the ship were ignited two seconds after the inner three. After the test on Wednesday, SpaceX posted on X that Flight 3 Starship had successfully completed its full-duration static fire. Now that the full-duration test is concluded, it is safe to say that Ship 28 is ready for the third integrated flight test. A couple of hours after the static fire test, the payload bay door of Ship 28 was tested to ensure it was opening and closing as intended. The payload bay is specially designed to deploy Starlink satellites into orbit. However, Ship 28 won't be carrying any payload on its mission. The orbital launch pad, which sustained minor damage during the second integrated flight test, recently underwent several repairs and tests. Teams fixed the launch mount infrastructure and swapped out the 20 booster hold-down clamps. They also removed the back panel of the booster quick disconnect and worked on the pipes and connections inside. The two hoses that deliver liquid methane and liquid oxygen to the booster were replaced with brand new ones. Later, the quick disconnect mechanism and the hood designed to protect it from the super heavy engine exhaust were tested. The Starship quick disconnect mechanism, which allows the flow of propellants, gases, electric power, and communication signals to the rocket's upper stage, also received repairs and upgrades. The mechanism was tested several times to verify its functionality. The Starship lifting and stacking arm, also known as chopsticks, has been tested lately after completing the repairs and upgrades. The orbital launch mount was purged with cryogenic fluids to ensure all the pipes, valves, and pumps delivering propellants to the launch pad were functioning as intended. After the launch pad and associated infrastructure were confirmed to be ready to host rocket testing, Super Heavy Booster 10 moved out of the Mega Bay and began its journey towards the launch site. After a nearly two-hour long journey on a self-propelled modular transporter with Christmas decorations, Booster 10 arrived at the launch site early Monday morning. The booster then moved towards the launch pad and took up position between the tower arms. The booster was later gently lifted and placed on the launch mount. Three days later, on Thursday afternoon, propellant loading into the booster began for static fire testing. During a booster static fire, the methane tank is usually partially filled with liquid methane and the oxygen tank is filled entirely with liquid oxygen. On Thursday, methane was loaded into the booster as planned, however, SpaceX faced an unspecified issue preventing liquid oxygen loading into the lower oxygen tank, prompting an immediate draining of both tanks. They made another static fire attempt on the next day, Friday, December 22. However, the test was called off even before loading propellant into the booster. Typically, during an aborted test or launch, the propellants are returned to storage tanks at the tank farm. But on Thursday, all the liquid oxygen was vented out, indicating a deviation from the norm. Clearly, something went wrong that prevented the recovery of liquid oxygen from being performed as usual. There is a decent chance that it has something to do with the recent upgrades made to the heat exchangers, pumps, valves, and plumbing on the oxygen side of the farm. The booster transport stand was moved to the launch pad after the test was called off Friday, suggesting Booster 10 was having some issues and SpaceX was going to remove the booster from the launch mount. But a few hours later, the transport stand returned to its parking spot, indicating that SpaceX had cancelled plans to lift the booster. The launch mount work platform was also taken to the launch site on Friday. This suggests that the launch mount might also be having issues. Overall, we don't have a clear idea of what the real mess is.
Either the tank farm has difficulty pumping propellants into the booster, or the launch mount and booster have some problem that is preventing the loading of propellants into the booster. Let's hope SpaceX fixes whatever the issues are and resumes booster testing next week. Elon Musk previously stated that Starship Flight 3 hardware should be ready to fly before the end of this month. With Starship 28 successfully completing its crucial static fire test and preparing for Flight 3, coupled with Booster 10's imminent 33 engine static fire, Musk's foresight stands affirmed this time. Recently, during a presentation at the Brownsville Events Center, Starbase General Manager Catherine Leaders said that SpaceX is targeting the first quarter of 2024 for Starship's Flight 3. It took SpaceX seven months to launch the Starship for the second time after the first launch failure in April. Now, just over a month after the partially successful second flight, they are almost ready to launch the Starship again. SpaceX's rapid turnaround from the setbacks showcases its remarkable resilience and unwavering commitment to pushing the boundaries of space exploration with swift adaptability and determination. However, the company still needs to obtain a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration, which is currently investigating the cause of the November mishap. The FAA will issue a permit once it is satisfied that SpaceX has taken the necessary corrective actions to ensure safety and compliance. At the Starbase production site, teams recently installed stringers to the exterior of Starship 26, connecting the payload bay and the forward dome section. Ship 26 has been stationed at the Rocket Garden for the past two months, following the single-engine static fire test in October. Originally, ships 26 and 27 were intended to demonstrate ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer in Earth orbit, a critical technology for NASA's Artemis missions. However, ship 27 was scrapped in August due to structural failure, forcing SpaceX to replan the demo mission. Why SpaceX is strengthening the exterior of ship 26 is unknown as of right now. They may be making changes to the Starship design based on data gathered from recent Starship test tank structural testing or the ship is being reinforced due to a lack of reinforcements at its payload bay area. The aft section of Super Heavy Booster 13 was moved into the Mega Bay the past week and later joined with the already stacked oxygen tank section. Super Heavy Booster 11 and 12 are also inside the Mega Bay, along with Booster 13 sections. Inside the high bay, we have Starships 29, 30, and 32. Starship 31 is at the Rocket Garden. All the ships and boosters are at various production stages. Ship 29 and Booster 11, likely to be launched in the fourth flight test, have already completed cryo-proof tests. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. Blue Origin successfully launched its new Shepard suborbital vehicle on its first mission in more than 15 months. The launch vehicle, designed for tourists and payloads, lifted off from the company's West Texas site on Tuesday, December 19th. Approximately 2 minutes and 40 seconds after liftoff, the rocket's first stage separated from the capsule and began its trip back to the ground. Less than seven and a half minutes into the flight, the booster touched down at the landing zone, marking its ninth successful landing. The reusable booster is designed to fly up to 25 missions. Meanwhile, after stage separation, the New Shepard capsule ascended towards space, experiencing microgravity for a few minutes and reaching a maximum altitude of 107 kilometers. On board the spacecraft were 33 science payloads, many of which were provided via NASA's Flight Opportunities Program, which arranges missions for experiments and technology demonstrations on suborbital vehicles. The mission also carried 38,000 postcards from Club for the Future, an educational nonprofit affiliated with Blue Origin. After its brief trip to space, the capsule descended to Earth under parachutes and touched down in the West Texas desert. The total mission timeline was 10 minutes and 13 seconds. Tuesday's mission was the return to flight of New Shepard after a mishap during an uncrewed mission in September 2022. One minute into the flight, an engine problem triggered the launch abort motor in the capsule, generating a quick pulse of thrust to propel the craft away from the failing rocket. The capsule, carrying only payloads, landed safely, but the propulsion module was destroyed. Investigation into the mishap concluded that the first stage B 3 pm engine nozzle suffered a thermostructural failure, which caused off-axis thrust and activated the crew capsule escape system. The damage was linked to the engine running hotter than expected. Blue Origin then implemented corrective actions, including design changes to the engine combustion chamber, nozzle, and operating parameters to prevent such failures in the future. The success of the December 19 mission confirmed that those design modifications worked out. During Tuesday's webcast, Blue Origin revealed that they plan to resume crewed New Shepard flight soon. 
Following a thorough review of today's mission, we look forward to flying our next crewed flight soon. Firefly Aerospace launched its Alpha rocket for the fourth time ever, but placed the payload in the wrong orbit. Alpha lifted off from California's Vandenberg Space Force Base on Friday, December 22, kicking off a mission dubbed Fly the Lightning. The rocket's ascent appeared to go as planned, and launch controllers reported that the upper stage had achieved a nominal transfer orbit. The launch vehicle was carrying an electronically steerable antenna payload, integrated into a Terran orbital nebula satellite bus, to low Earth orbit. Developed by aerospace giant Lockheed Martin, the instrument is designed to demonstrate faster on-orbit sensor calibration to deliver rapid capabilities to U.S. warfighters. Firefly ended the launch webcast about 10 minutes after liftoff, at the request of Lockheed Martin. Firefly confirmed in a statement 12 hours after launch that the second stage malfunctioned and failed to deliver the payload to its precise target orbit. The company said that communications had been established with the satellite and mission operations are now underway. However, the low perigee of the spacecraft's orbit indicates it is likely to re-enter within several weeks. Firefly has already begun an investigation into the second stage performance to determine the root cause of the mishap. 29-meter-tall Firefly Alpha, the world's largest carbon fiber rocket ever built, is capable of sending a 1,170 kg payload into a low Earth orbit at a cost of $15 million per launch. The rocket's first stage is outfitted with four Reaver 1 engines that run on RP-1 and liquid oxygen propellants. The engines work together to produce a total thrust of 736.1 kN and a specific impulse of 296 seconds. The second stage of the Alpha rocket is equipped with a single Lightning 1 engine, capable of delivering 70 kN of thrust. Fly the Lightning was the fourth orbital mission for the Alpha rocket. September saw the rocket's maiden successful flight following two unsuccessful attempts in 2021 and 2022. Firefly's next mission, Ilana 43, will launch 10 CubeSats for NASA as early as March next year. NASA's Ingenuity Mars helicopter has just completed its 69th flight on Mars, setting a new distance record in the process. On December 20, the 1.8-kilogram helicopter traveled a distance of 705 meters, surpassing its previous record of 704 meters, which was set in April last year. Flying at a velocity of 10 meters per second, the tiny Mars copter reached an altitude of 16 meters during the flight that lasted 135 seconds. NASA's Perseverance rover and the Ingenuity helicopter landed together inside the Jezero crater in February 2021. The rover is hunting for signs of past Mars life and collecting samples for future return to Earth. Ingenuity is aiding those quests by doing scouting work for the Perseverance team. Notching 1,000 Mars days on the Red Planet, the rover recently completed its exploration of the ancient river delta that holds evidence of a lake that filled Jezero crater billions of years ago. To date, the robotic Mars Explorer has collected a total of 23 samples, revealing the geologic history of Mars in the process. As planned, the rover has dropped 10 sample-filled tubes on the ground, where they await the arrival of the sample return mission to ferry them back to Earth for more robust scrutiny in the 2030s. The rover's trek next year will aim to fill the 15 sample tubes remaining on board. Perseverance's companion, Ingenuity, was intended to perform five flights on the Martian surface, at altitudes ranging from 3 to 5 meters, for up to 90 seconds each, covering nearly 300 meters at a time. The mission's flight log shows that Ingenuity has far exceeded its original goals since its maiden flight in April 2021, by completing 69 flights, traveling 16.7 kilometers, and reaching heights of up to 24 meters. Ingenuity's remarkable achievement showcases the tiny helicopter's immense capabilities and demonstrates aerial exploration is possible on Mars despite its thin atmosphere. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.